For all the hype about how crossovers and SUVs are dominating the car market, there's still plenty of people interested in buying a traditional four-door sedan. And if you're looking in the mid-size class, one of the most popular segments, well, you're spoiled for choice. Accord, Camry, and Altima are the household names in this class, but the Chevy Malibu has always been right up there too. The last generation, though, really struggled. It's a really competitive class, and the Malibu is a bit of a letdown. But this new version, introduced in 2016, is lighter, better looking, more spacious, more fuel efficient. It's the best Malibu Chevy's introduced in this decade. How does it look? Much like other Chevy cars like the Cruze and Volt. Now, this model with its blue velvet metallic paint, 19-inch aluminum wheels, bits of exterior chrome and so on, looks very smart. But the Malibu in general looks a little anonymous and doesn't really push the envelope in terms of styling for mid-size four-door sedans. How's the storage? At 15.9 cubic feet, the Malibu's trunk is about the same size or even a little larger than some of its competition. You can fold the back seats down for more storage as well. First though, you have to pull this release, then you need to go around to the back of the car and pull the seat back down manually. It doesn't just spring forward like in some cars. But overall, this is a wide, deep trunk with tons of space for family vacations. I've got no concerns that we're gonna be able to fit our three suitcases from away travel in the back. Let's find out. This center cubby is pretty roomy for storing a lot of stuff, and in general I'm happy with how much storage I have up front in the Malibu, especially this little pocket right up front that lets you store your keys or phone while you're driving. There's also really big cup holders in the center console, and big door pockets for carrying all your hydration essentials. Is it roomy? One of the biggest flaws with the old Malibu was how cramped it was inside. The new one is a few inches longer on the outside, and along with some clever engineering, there's way more space inside. Up front, there's plenty of room for an adult like myself. And in back, where the old Malibu was especially claustrophobic, you get way more space than before. I can now sit back here comfortably without issue with tons of legroom, though the roof is still pretty low. How does the interior feel? We're in a fully loaded Malibu Premier, and it's got a really nice mix of materials inside. Anywhere that I'm gonna touch is softly padded. The steering wheel by my knee, by the armrest here. Now, things that I don't like include this plastic trim on the center console. It kind of is supposed to look like wood, but it just looks and feels very plastic and cheap. And then also inside this center storage console, there's this little felt square on the bottom that stops your phone from rattling around quite so much. But the fact that it comes out and just feels like cheap felt is a little disappointing in a fully loaded car. Is it well equipped? The Malibu is very competitive in terms of option packages. This model, for instance, has navigation, remote start, heated seats, a big sunroof, big wheels, wireless phone charging, a heated steering wheel, lane keep assist, and even cooled seats. As in a few other General Motors cars, there are also two unconventional safety features that you won't find in things like a Honda or a Toyota. The first is teen driver mode, which lets you set a pin code for each key to set a top speed limiter, record the driver's speed and performance, and prevent your kid from turning off the car's stability control. There's also rear seat reminder, which as we've seen on some other GM cars, prompts you to check the back seat if you might have left something there, whether that's your backpack or your child. How's the infotainment system? Really good. A 7-inch display comes as standard, with an 8-inch display optional, but both have clear, easy-to-use on-screen menus. The Malibu's infotainment system responds quickly to every input, and even has features like a built-in 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, if you pay for the subscription, plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support, as well as Chevy's OnStar telematics service. Is it a good daily driver? No matter where I'm going, whether I'm in traffic or on a back road or on the highway, I really enjoy driving the Malibu. It's very, very pleasant all the time. And that's not faint cranes. It's a reflection of the fact that this car is just really, really good as a daily driver. I like that there's great visibility all around. I like that the steering is very precise yet quite light. 
And this car in general is actually quite light. It's two to 300 pounds lighter than its predecessor, and you really feel that. It feels a little bit more nimble on its feet than before. So yeah, wherever I'm going, whatever I'm doing, this is a nice daily driver. Is it fun to drive? As with many other aspects of this car, you could do worse and you could do better in the midsize sedan class. On the pros category, this engine is a two liter turbo, so you get 90 more horsepower than the base engine. That means 250, so it's plenty quick. But at the same time, when you go into a bend, it's not really that fun. The steering is a little dead and the suspension gets a little bit mushy when you push it. But again, we don't really look for that much sportiness or fun to drive in most mid-size sedans. This car is perfectly acceptable for what we expect from it. How's the fuel economy? With this two liter turbo engine, 22 miles per gallon city and 33 MPG highway. That's not too bad for this much power and is similar to other mid-size sedans with two liter turbo or V6 engines. Opt for the standard 1.5 liter engine, which has stop start tech, and you'll get 27 city and 36 MPG highway. And there's also a Malibu hybrid if you need even greater mileage. How much is it? Malibu pricing is right on top of what its competition costs, starting at about 23,000 and running all the way up to 32,000 before options. This particular car, a fully loaded up Premier, is just over $36,000. What are the negatives? There are no huge glaring negatives with the Malibu, but it's fair to say that the exterior styling could be more striking and the driving experience could be a little bit more exciting too. Who should buy it? There's no real obvious reason to not consider the Chevy Malibu. In almost every respect, it runs right down the middle of the mid-size sedan class. It's great for somebody who just needs an easy to live with, roomy mid-size car. But at the same time, there's probably no one aspect that really leaps out at me as best in class either. Still, there's three powertrains to choose from and a lot of different options, so whatever you're looking for, there's probably a Chevy Malibu perfect for you. If you like this why buy don't forget to click the like button or leave us a comment, and you should subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get a new why buy every single Thursday. You can also get in touch with us on all our social media channels, and the links for all of those are down below.